Just south of the California line in Old Mexico is the border town of Tijuana. In 1956, the time of this shocking story, it lured more than 12 million American visitors, servicemen and aircraft workers from nearby San Diego, teenagers and wealthy visitors from Pasadena, Hollywood, and Beverly Hills. They came mainly because of the knowledge that in this once sleepy village, they could find anything they wanted. For Tijuana, whose name, oddly enough, meant Aunt Jane, had become one of the frankest, gaudiest sin towns in the world. In the daytime, Avenida Revolucion, the main stem, provided tourists with glittering souvenir shops, the smell of leather belts and sandals and tacos and enchiladas, novelty photographs, and where it runs into the highway to Ensenada, the bullfights, and the races. Night, it offered the highlight games, but later another kind of inducement, girly shows. One's more private. Sin offered at bargain basement prices, but sometimes turning out to be more costly. There were men on both sides of the border who wanted to see Tijuana cleaned up. But when the chips were down, there was only one man willing to wage war against the vice lords and their trigger men. A Tijuana newspaper man named Manuel Acosta Mesa. This was another in a series of attempts by the mobsters to silence Manuel. Traidor, they called him, traitor. My name is Paul Coates. I'm a reporter with the Los Angeles Mirror News. Before me are copies of El Imparcial, the newspaper edited and published by Manuel Acosta Mesa in the summer of 1956. Aquí estamos, waitress. Here we are, you vultures, was the taunting headline he threw in the faces of the gang overlords on July the 9th. And in his vivid, uncompromising language, he followed it up on July the 17th with an editorial. An editorial that reads in part, to shut us up, you'll have to make us a present of wooden pajamas after sprinkling it with lead. It began in April of 1956, not far from El Sol, the newspaper which Manuel edited then. Tamales on the hook. This is your lucky night, girls. We've arrived. Yeah. Wonder what he was drinking. One thing, it wasn't watered. Yeah, maybe if I go run, I can get him the next time. What 
Is Manuel here? Where's Manuel? What's wrong? Uh, get Manuel. Senor Mesa, please come quickly. Por qué? ¿Qué pasa? Is Senor Rodriguez, the school teacher, he's been hurt. Hurt? Alberto, ¿qué traes? Manuel. No, no, not here. In my office, where you'll be more comfortable. Look at Dr. Calderon. Si. Right here. Oh, easy. Easy. You all right, huh? Okay, now, Alberto, tell me, what happened? They beat me, Manuel. Three men. Who? What three men? I didn't recognize them. They let me know who they were. Working for the syndicate. What have you got to do with the syndicate? Manuel, remember last week when the Federales arrested that man Fuentes? Yes, they picked him up with a suitcase full of marijuana. It was I who told them about him. Uh, they... They used a pipe on me. I'm a little bit... All right, now, now, relax, relax. You have plenty of time. No, it is past. Manuel, all these years you've been fighting the syndicate. Friends like me said, viva, Manuel, but did nothing else. Our skins were too precious. But when I found out about that man Fuentes, what he was doing at the school, I had to be a man. What do you mean, what he was doing at the school? That dope he had. He was recruiting my students to peddle it. The boys had not always been kind, but I think of them as my sons. I told them to stay away from them, and they said if I didn't keep out of it, I would be broken in two. They nearly succeeded. You'll be all right, Alberto. And this story will be on the front page, believe me. It'll be so hot, it'll scorch them. Tell them I have just started fighting. And I intend to talk to parents and other teachers and... Uh, uh, Manuel, open the window. Alberto. He was brave or jackass enough to oppose the syndicate. We better get him to the hospital. Help him out. No, no, hospital. It is too expensive no. now. Don't you worry about that. I'll take care of that some way. No, Manuel. Now, don't you argue with me. There's nobody who argues better than I. I'll be in the hospital in a few minutes. There's somebody I have to see first. Seven, four, six. Senor Acosta, you are going to see Peron Diaz, I know. You be careful of him. Tonight, it'd be better for him to be careful of me. Suckers. You know, uh, I'm thinking we, we hire a kid to stand at the border and give out circulars to the cars. We put our name on it and maybe the picture of a girl. What do you think? Uh, circulars are cheap, so are kids. Look, Eddie, you know, you're running this club. You don't like my ideas, you, you say so, eh? Don't mind me, Peron. It's been a tough day. You know, uh, you, you got me a little worried. When I first brought you to Tijuana, you were excited, happy. Handling all that money made you a little drunk. But now I, uh... Is your wife okay? Liz, she's dandy. No morning sickness yet, nothing. Ah, uh, 
having a child. This, this is a wonderful thing. So they say. What is it, then? You don't like being in Tijuana no more? Tijuana's. Uh, it's done more for me in six months than the music business did in years. Yeah. Well, I'm on a hock. I live like a capitalist. I'd kiss the ground out there. Who is it? La Costa Mesa. I want to see Diaz. Is the bandido in there? Well, being called names by Manuel Acosta Mesa shouldn't bother me anymore. It does, however. Lander is a nursery word compared to what I really think. Ah, come on, come on, sit down. You know Eddie Marge. Sit down, sit down. Your boys beat up Manuel Rodriguez, the school teacher, tonight. He's on his way to the hospital. That must give you a great satisfaction. You think you're going to scare everyone else from informing on the syndicate. I ask you, Eddie, do you have any idea what he's talking about? Manuel, listen, I never even heard of this Rodriguez. Oh, you know all about it, all right. Your boys worked on him because he had the courage to tell the federal police about Fuentes. Ah, Miguel Fuentes, you mean. That's right. That coyote of yours, with a suitcase full of marijuana and the violence to, to recruit schoolboys to peddle it. Manuel, listen, this Fuentes worked for me now and then, but I fired him when I found out he was mixed up with dope. When am I going to convince you that I am strictly in the nightclub business? nightclub business. Every taxi cab driver in Tijuana knows that's only a front. You know, someday I'm going to sue you for slander. I'd welcome it. Uh, of course you would. It would make bigger headlines and boost circulation. You don't really believe that, do you? Oh, it's an old technique. You challenge this one, attack that one, the bigger the better. And don't worry if they're innocent or not, as long as the commotion sells newspapers. You're as innocent as a loaded machine gun. Isn't it why Galindo hired you as his editor? To keep El Sol from going bankrupt? Galindo wants to see the paper remain alive, but you listen to me. If it means that I lose every reader, I'll fight to keep our children from becoming dope peddlers. Yeah. Take your hands off me. I'm not finished yet. If you have come here to throw accusations around my Oh, life. no. That won't help Rodriguez right now. I want money. Money? To pay his hospital bills. To keep his family from starving until he's able to work again. But I told you I never even heard of this, Rodriguez. You write a check for $300. Oh, just like that, eh? I'm on my way to the hospital right now, and I'll deliver it. And if it isn't enough, I'll be back for more. You know, I know you have had some results crashing into offices, but I am not stupid. I give you money, and it looks like I had something to do with it. Oh, no, Manuel. You wanted to crucify me for a long time. Don't expect me to help you. Adios. Come on. You will have an easier time getting rid of your shadow. I'll leave when I have the check in my hand. Yeah, we'll see about that. Open the door, Eddie. Come on. Eddie! Let go of me! Do, get yourself killed? Who do you think you are wrecking my club? Your club? You know, Eddie, everyone thinks it's yours. But it belongs to Diaz. So do you. That's not true. You know, that wasn't very smart what you did in there, Manuel. It wasn't smart what you did to Rodriguez. As you'll find out when you read this week's newspaper. I think I had better have a little talk with this boss. Come on. All right, let's get back to work. I, I hope we have not come at a bad time, Senor Colindo. What can I do for you? Well, we wanted to talk a little business. Come in. Senor? Hey. I have not discussed this with Eddie March, but I have been thinking of advertising the Club Matador in your paper. 
maybe buy a full page every week. Now, what would such an ad cost? $200 is the usual rate. $200. Multiplied by 52 is, uh, well, it's a little over $10,000. It's a lot of money, but uh, I think it would be worth it. <laughs> I imagined you would be a little surprised. I don't deny it. Oh, it's true, your paper and me, well, shall we say we've been feuding? But I think it's about time we stopped all that. Why not? You and I can do each other a lot of good. An ad in El Sol wouldn't help your business much. Mexicans don't go to the Club Matador. Oh, that's true. We do cater mostly to the Americanos, but, uh, well, there's all kinds of advertising. I am not interested in making customers out of your readers, only in obtaining their goodwill. I see. I want them to look on us as their friends, as someone who brings business to Tijuana. Not the way your editor described us. Now Manuel's got the idea that Senor Diaz has got something to do with beating up a school teacher. Oh, yes, I would want you to have a little talk with him about that. When he left me, he was threatening to fry me in the next issue of the paper. If Manuel wants to write a story, there is nothing I can do about it. And why not? You're the publisher. He has to listen to you. No. When I hired Manuel, I, I had to agree to guarantee that he would have complete editorial control. You mean he can write anything he wants? Yes. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Well, Sol was failing. Manuel's terms were stiff, but, but I needed him so desperately, I, I just had to give in. <laughs> you made a mistake, Galindo. I don't think so. Perhaps you would prefer to have the American authorities close the border. Of course not. Manuel's articles are being picked up by the papers in San Diego and Los Angeles. He's made this town look so black that there's talk of keeping all of the Americans out. If that happens, this town will die. We live on American dollars. I don't think that Manuel would do anything to hurt Tijuana. No, oh, you try telling that to those merchants out there. They're worried. Take my word, they're at the stage of doing something serious, if there's any more bad publicity. This article comes out on Senor Diaz. Maybe all the push they need to put an end to your paper. It's a very simple thing to cancel their advertising. Pass a resolution among themselves to boycott you. They shut down El Imparcial that way. Remember? They didn't do that of their own accord. They were intimidated by the syndicate. Ah, the syndicate. Always the syndicate. What would you do if your livelihood were threatened? Would the syndicate have to force you to save yourself? A person would have to be blind not to see what really happened. Ah, oh, you're blind now, Galindo, if you push this. If you give up everything to satisfy a wild man like Manuel. Your wife would never forgive you. A child would never forgive you. You'd be a fool to let that happen. But there's nothing I can do about Manuel. I told you. No. Oh. I'm sure that you can. Think about it. Think about it, Colindo. But don't think too long. You know, canceling their advertising is all that's necessary. It would be a shame if uh, someone got hysterical and uh, did something foolish. Pretty bad, I'm afraid. A lot of complications. What kind? Well, they're taking x-rays. They won't say. One good thing is Dr. Calderon is going to take care of him without charge. I'm sure he'll be all right. Sure. You go home now. It's been a long day. Oh, I almost forgot. Senor Galindo called, and he said he would see you around 11 o'clock. Well, good. He'll get a chance to read the story I'm writing about Rodriguez. <laughs> One day you will change, Tijuana. Me? <laughs> Oh, no, my dear, I wish I could. The people of Tijuana, without their support, I'm helpless. Well, good night. Good night. I wonder what the antidote for these tacos are. Man, they go down hot. Put some hair on your chest. Hey, a little bit of that would put some hair on my chest. Mama, I want that for Chris. Any day in the week is good enough for me. Come on. Hey, can I help you with that, baby? You used to do it for my little old grandmother. 
Maybe she doesn't like grandmothers. My grandmother used to put me asleep by putting my head in the oven and turning on the gas. <laughs> El Sol de Tijuana. Do you work for them? Please go away. Well, what is it? A newspaper. Well, newspaper people are supposed to know everything. Maybe you're just the one to show us around town. Look, you'll find all the girls you want in the cabarets. Okay. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you believe in the good neighbor policy? I have to go home some other time. Some other time may be too late. I may be dead by then. My old man tells me all the time, he said, you'll see, he'll kill himself. So maybe I will. But I like that old song, I'm gonna live till I die. There are many ways of living. Oh, no, 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 there's only one. And that's to know you're living. That's to think any second you may die. Oh, come on, Chiquita, loosen up, will you? I may buy you a present, you know. Look, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to call a policeman. Oh, I'm scared stiff. What's all the goody-goody routine? Look, baby, this is tier one, and you're no different than anybody else down here. Catch a bus. She ain't worth the trouble. Come on, let's go take him on those so-called nightclubs. You don't think she's good, eh? Sure I do. She's a tall one, but the boys like them that way. What is your name? Mitch. Mitch? Mitch for Mitchell. Hard for me to say, but I like you. Make gustas. I think you'd like anybody that bought you a drink. Hey, Mitch, we're here to gas it up, man. Oh, I'm having a ball, Dad. That chick back there bug you. What chick? The one that slapped you. What are you, flip, man? Something he's on his mind, but I get it off. You dance with me. I bite, but not hard. Mm, that's better, eh? This way you can only think of Luffy. Yeah, I guess so. I bet you muy hombre. You know what that means? Much man. And I bet you don't play with dolls, either. <laughs> you have a car? Yes. They won't miss us for a little while. First, you give me some money, and I buy a few sticks for us. What, marijuana? I know someone here who sells it. The best. Well, we don't need any of that stuff. You ever try any? No. You afraid? No, I'm not afraid. Prove it. I'll buy it. You wait outside. Thought you were muy hombre. Maybe I make a mistake. Hey, where's Mitch going? Don't worry. He'll be all right. Five sticks. Five sticks? That's all he wants? Maybe later on I get him to buy more. Let me first. Don't forget to put my cut in there, too. Don't worry. If you want to push tea, find someplace else to give me that. Get rid of this stuff for you. Say, who do you think you are? Now, get out of here. Easy, Eddie. He knows a friend of Diaz. This cokey. Get the stuff back to him. Sure. Let the police trace it back here. That happens and my club gets the full treatment. You get something straight. This is not your club. You're only front for it. I also happen to run it. Only what would you do? Don't look at Scree with Diaz. Now, Pino's done the boss a number of favors. One today, as a matter of fact. What favors? I'll let Diaz tell you when he's ready. Hey, what's the matter with you? You've been acting very funny lately, helping Manuel before. Now, this. Do you want and suddenly become too strong for your stomach, then maybe you don't belong here. If this punk gets us into trouble, you'll be in the clear. Now, don't worry.
Carlos. Take care of things. I'm going home. Don't try giving it a bath or the paint will come off. Hello, Eddie. I thought for a minute the store getting his dates mixed up. Oh, you know, I had a nightmare last night. I dreamed the baby was already born, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't diaper it. It was just awful. I borrowed this from a little girl next door to practice. Well, that's pretty good to me. Mm. Let me try it. Oh, Eddie, I'm worried. I really am. Worried about what? Well, I've never been around babies much. You know, we've been on the road all the time, and... Well, you'll know what to do when the right time comes. Well, what if I dropped it? Well, I guess just carry it like a football, the way the Red Cross manual says. Well, there's so many other things that can happen. Oh, come on. You sound like a junior miss. <laughs> you'll make a great mother. And I intend to make a great father. Come here. You're home early. Everything all right at the club? Oh, a couple of stick-ups and a fire, but nothing really important. I'm beginning to feel very left out of things. Every time I ask you about the club lately, you put me off. Well, a man comes home to get away from his business. If he has to answer questions, he might as well stay around there and watch the cash register. I want to hear about your day. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, I'm his wife. Who is it? What was that? I've had three calls like that this month. What kind of calls? People telling me what they think of us for associating with Diaz. <sighs> so stupid. Well, uh, they've probably been reading that scandal sheet of Manuel Acosta Mesa's. Eddie. Eddie, that was Mrs. Rodriguez on the phone, wife of the school teacher. Rodriguez? It's true, isn't it? Diaz is with the syndicate. No. Well, you know how it is in a nightclub business. Anything that happens, you're the first one that gets blamed. Diaz is OK. Eddie. Eddie, we've known about Diaz a long time. We just didn't want to admit it. Diaz is clean. But I've, I've never seen him do anything to disprove that. I think I'll tell the police about these calls. Maybe he is with the syndicate. Does that make any difference to us? I don't know. Just because I run a nightclub for him, does that mean I'm with the syndicate? Eddie, it, it just frightens me to be mixed up with this man in Honey, any way. You want me to walk out on him? Give up 25% right off the top? Well, maybe you could organize another band. Big bands are dead. The public won't pay a dime now for anything but novelty acts or freak singers. Well, what about arranging, then, or composing? Sweetie, if I leave Diaz, there's only one place for me to go. Back to a bar, pounding some piano. Oh, look, you remember the way we felt when Diaz offered me this job? Yes, but we didn't know it was going to be like this. Yes, we... We got a kid on the way, Liz. I want to be able to do something for him. I want to be around when he grows up. But I don't want to always be on the road, living in cheap motels and... Look, what if somebody like this Manuela Costa Mesa is able to break up the syndicate and, and connect you with it? Nobody, including this Acosta character, is going to break up the syndicate. So he goes around making like a lion. When the syndicate decides to put the lid on him, he's through. He'll turn out to be the tamest kitten you've ever heard. Just wait till he begins to feel the pressure. You know how much I detest the syndicate, Manuel, but the time has come to be practical. In what way? Well, to begin with, we can't print this story. You think Diaz will sue us, don't you? He wouldn't dare. Manuel, what I'm trying to say is that we can't win against the syndicate. 
Has Diaz been to see you? Why, of course. He must have gone straight to your home. What difference does it make? The time has come to be practical. Practical? You didn't worry about being practical when you came to me in the beginning. Just save me, save me. That was all that was on your mind. Look, look, Manuel. I know that you built our circulation through your reform policy, but, but now we've gone too far. The syndicate is ready to chop our heads off. Let them try. Manuel, you might as well fight a hurricane. Vice and Tijuana is big business. It's not run by one man like Diaz, but by the La Mafia with international links, and, and, and it's controlled by big officials. I'm aware of that. But so far, there hasn't been a crime organization that's stronger than an aroused public. The public doesn't care. Why should they? A wide open town attracts Americans, and Americans bring dollars. You underestimate our people. They have pride, a great deal of it. And what Rodriguez did proves it. Look, there are many other worthwhile projects for you. Manuel, you've always talked about wanting to start a campaign to build an orphanage. Oh, yes. Build a home for our children and let the syndicate run their lives. Is that it? All right. Don't turn the paper into an advertisement for the syndicate. But don't attack the big operators like Diaz. Limit your targets. Close a brothel, point a finger at a gambling the den. The syndicate but... wouldn't mind that, would they? What are you, Manuel, an avenging angel or something? No, Galindo. No. But when a decent man is hurt, I feel it. I call it for myself as much as I do for him. And I'm ashamed. Shame like cowardice is often the spur that drives men. What are you ashamed of? Of the picture the border towns give Americans and the rest of the world. I can't help but think that all of Mexico is this way. That the whole country is full of thieves and marijuana pushers. Which couldn't be farther from the truth. They say that pride goeth before a fall, Manuel. I can't afford to risk my business and the safety of my family to satisfy you. Mm -hmm. And the contract you have with me? I, I know, of course, that your contract does give you complete editorial freedom. But if you insist on holding me to it, I shall be forced to buy it up. I see. I realize, of course, what that will cost me, but I... I have no other choice. Hmm. Diaz must have really frightened you. Call me and let me know what you decide, Manuel. But, but Manuel, remember this. If you leave me, there's no other paper in town that will hire you. You're too hot. Oh, well. Perhaps I've had enough of the newspaper business already. Uh, I think not. You're a born newspaper man, Manuel. One of the best. Ruben. I'm sorry, Manuel. I'm sorry. Papa, Papa. Oh, all right. Move. Move. <laughs> come on, come on. Papa's got to go to work. You got to have some breakfast. Mm, be a strong, great, big boy. I wish I were you, Papa. Me? Why? Because you're the bravest man in Tijuana. Braver than a bullfighter. A bullfighter? Well, well, well. One day they'll put your picture in a vessel, or maybe a stamp. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll change places, huh? You know, I'd rather be you. No worries. No troubles? He only gives troubles. It's only when you don't let me do what I want. Aww. You know something, son? You should be very happy you have a nice girl like your sister to tell you what to do. There are a lot of children in Tijuana that have nobody to tell them anything. Orphans. No papa, no mama. Papa, are you going to start that campaign to build an orphanage? Mm-hmm. Only instead of money, I'm going to ask everyone to donate one brick. Just one brick. What do you think of it? Well, everyone should be able to give a brick. Well, you don't sound very enthusiastic this morning. No, I think it's a fine idea. I was just wondering what happened to the story on Rodriguez. It's there. Yes, but it's on the back page, and the syndicate isn't even mentioned. You know, Enrique, you say you want to be a newspaper man. Well, there's one thing you have to learn. People are interested in many kinds of things, not only crime. I understand. You know something, Papa? I'm glad. Glad? Yes, it's about time you stop fighting them. 
We want you alive. Sooner or later, they would have killed you. They wouldn't touch Papa. You're right, Paul. The truth is, Galindo threatened to buy up my contract unless I went easy on them. Hello? One minute, please. Doctor Calderon, from the hospital. Good morning, Doctor. Oh. Yes, sir. That's too bad. Yes. Thank you for calling me. Rodriguez. He's dead. I just want to talk to you. Can't you leave me alone? Look, I'm not going to hurt you. Senora Costa! Hey, will you wait a minute? You come down here. You think you can do anything you like. Well, we are Mexicans, but we are people just as good as you are. Well, look, I'm only trying to apologize to you. I never apologize to anybody in my life. Something's the matter? Nothing, Senora Costa. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. <laughs> hey, come here. Hey, stop that. <laughs> stop that. <laughs> First, you do like this. See? Now, now you look for little tiny holes to form. See? Now you dig quickly, like this. Here. Hey, you're an expert at this, huh? Well, my brothers taught me when I was very young in Santa Rosalia. We used to drive here every Sunday. Well, how come you moved to Tijuana? Well, there was a big copper mine in Santa Rosalia where my whole family worked. One day, the mine closed. There was no more copper. We didn't believe it at first. We kept thinking like everyone else, the mine would open again. Then, our money disappeared, and we were without food. Well, there's no sense talking about it now. Well, we didn't starve to death, thanks to Senor Acosta. You know, they say that Mr. Acosta broke into a very important government meeting one day. And you know, he pounded the desk until they passed a resolution to help us. You like him? Yes. One day in Santa Rosalia, I decided I would work for him. I'd work for nothing if necessary. Well, you must really be sold on him. Yes. Come on, let's look for clams. All right, well, look. You look over here. I'm going to go up there and try my luck. I think I found something. Oh, somebody must have lost it here. I wonder what it is. To Linda from... from you. Go ahead, open it up. But you mustn't buy me anything. Will you open it up? to my mom. Look, I know it sounds like a line, but it really did. But you hardly know me. I couldn't accept this. Now, look, I want you to. But there must be other girls at your school. If there were, do you think I'd drive 85 miles every weekend? How about your father? Maybe he'd like to keep it. Look, I don't live with my father. I live with my relatives, anyway. Go ahead, put the bracelet on. Better than the clam? Oh, it's better than anything I've ever owned. 
Hey, come back. It's getting late, Mitch, and I don't want you driving home in the dark. Oh, there's no rush. I'm going to stay in Tijuana tonight. How about your school tomorrow? Look, the teachers will be happy as birds if I'm out there. But your relatives, they will be expecting you also. Will you forget them? Mitch, you frighten me. Why? In six months, they're going to dump me in somebody else anyway. That's the way it's always been, from one relative to the next. I'm talking about something else. What do you mean? You have so much hate inside of you. I wouldn't say that. It's true. But I'm going to put out that hate. I have to, Mitch, if it's going to be right between us. You know, I think you can do anything you say. This is your car? That's right, what goes? Let me see your license, please. You had that fender repaired recently? Yeah, about six weeks ago. What happened to it? Well, well, what's this all about? You'd better answer his question. Well, I was in Tijuana. I parked the car someplace, and when I came back, I found the fender smashed. Did you report it? Well, what for? My insurance doesn't cover me down here. Well, what's wrong? One moment. That fender was not damaged, as you say. Oh, no? You struck three cars that were parked in Avenida Hidalgo, driving like a wild man. Oh, you're crazy. Loco, man. I can drive this buggy through a keyhole without even touching the side. Perhaps, when you're not under the influence of marijuana. You can still smell the ashes. We'll have a laboratory examine it to make sure. Is it true, Mitch? Yeah, sure, it's true. After I met you, I picked up a few weeds at the Club Matador. Hey, look, I, I don't remember hitting any cars. It's possible. I've seen them like you before. Fall from a second floor and never know it. Vamonos. Hey, look, look. Look, it was the first time I ever touched this stuff in the last time. Give me a break, will you? Oh, wait, he'll pay for the damages. It is damages. too late. Damaging public and private property in an automobile is a crime. Now, look, I'm not going to any filthy jail. Don't make it difficult for us. Look, I heard about your jails. I'll never get out. Mitch! I'll call for a patrol boat. Don't let him get out of your sight. sight of him yet? He just seemed to have disappeared. Maybe he got away. Mira, mira. Dios mío. Allá. You must have hit the rock, senorita. <laughs> it wasn't our fault. He shouldn't have run away. There hadn't been a slimy dope peddler at the Club Matador. They were killed by marijuana in the syndicate. Do you still want to be a newspaper man? Yes. You're hired as my assistant. I'm going after that syndicate again. Papa, how can you do that? Galindo's Galindo let... willing to buy up my contract. With the money I get, I'm going to start up El Imparcial again. Papa, it'll be the same thing over again. You'll bang your head against a stone wall. Ah, oh, perhaps, son. 
But my head will feel much better than it does now, believe me. Papa, they will kill you. This is our home. Our home is something to be loved. A place where children can grow up into decent citizens. Walk proudly and safely. This is what I want. And if it means risking a bullet, well, let it come. Three days later, June 6th, Manuel Acosta Mesa told a merchant's meeting that El Imparcial was back in business. He vowed that the paper would not fail this time, nor would it take a backward step until the pack of rats who controlled Tijuana died from exposure to decency. The first issue of El Imparcial carried a front page editorial headed Yo Acuso, I Accuse, in which Manuel cited a score of crimes committed by the syndicate, including the murder of Rodriguez and indirectly the drowning of an American schoolboy. Every copy was bought up, but by syndicate men with instructions to keep the paper from the public. But this didn't stop Manuel. What took you so long? The paper just came out. The same editorial's on the front page. You want us to buy up this issue also? No, I can't go buying up every paper he ever prints. Go through this and copy the names of everyone advertising in it. I'll break Manuel just the way I did before. Oh, when is this? Come right in. Are you Senor Casares? See? Si. Well, we're from the committee to preserve Tijuana. We see that you're an advertiser in El Imparcial. What of it? Perhaps it did not occur to you that by supporting Acosta, you're helping return Tijuana to the dust. If he manages to close the border with his wild accusations, we'll all be out of business. At first, the velvet glove approach was used to persuade advertisers to desert Manuel. But on meeting resistance, they let the glove rip a little. They branded him a traitor. If that didn't work, they let it rip all the way. This is only a sample of what you'll get if you ever advertise with that traitor again. advertisers had dropped out of the columns of El Imparcial one by one. In bombing a dress shop, it was the syndicate's aim to crumble the resolve of these staunch ones who had remained. They were supremely confident. Well, what a surprise. Buenas noches, senores. Buenas noches. Rodrigo. Hello, Manuel. Oh, it's good to see you. Where's Alma? I'll get you some coffee. This isn't a social call, Manuel. Here. This is for you. These are all personal checks. Manuel, most of us are in businesses that do not advertise. That doesn't mean, however, that we should be deprived of the chance of fighting with you. We believe in you, Manuel. We feel if the paper can keep going, we have a chance for some decency in this town. Bro. I don't know what to say. El Imparcial continued to hit the streets regularly, and there was no let up in Manuel's blazing campaign against the syndicate. San Diego and Los Angeles newspapers, long concerned over the fact that Tijuana had become a chief source of narcotics for the United States, leaped to Manuel's support. And the California syndicate operators became alarmed. I didn't call you up here for excuses. If you can't handle the situation, I'll get someone to replace you. Look, I told you, he is getting private money from people. How can I work on them if I do not know who they are? Then hire someone to kill him. Kill him and shut his mouth once and for all. No, I do not think this is a good idea. You don't. Look, Manuel is a hero to the people in Tijuana. If we kill him now, we really stir up a hornet's nest. There's always a couple of hard heads like Manuel. 
The rest will melt away, especially if they think they might get the same treatment. Look, I was brought up in Tijuana. I started selling chewing gum down. I was barefoot till I was ten. We're not interested in your life story. All I'm trying to tell you is that I know these people down there. You can only push them so far. Would you rather we just let him close the border? Oh, no. Take a look at this paper. Right here in Los Angeles, they're talking about it. That border closes. It not only kills the tourist trade, it shuts off our supply of junk. All right, all right. I'll be happy to get him off my back. You can get one of the Katero brothers to do the job. No, that is no good. The police would question them right away. You know someone they wouldn't question? Yeah. They would never even dream of him. Hello, Miguel. How are you? How have you been treating him? You know what it's like around here? Now, Miguel, you don't still blame me for not getting you off. Ah, you're supposed to be a good lawyer. The police caught you with a suitcase full of marijuana. I would have had to be a magician, not a lawyer, to help you. What did you come around here for? Unless you figure a way to get me out of here, a better way of spending my time on this. Give me, I want to talk to you. Sit down. Sit down, Miguel. The syndicate sent me. The syndicate? Yeah, naturally, they couldn't be seen here with you. What do they want? Manuel Acosta mess has been running wild in his paper. They can't take him anymore. He'll make it worth your while if you put an end to him. If I put an end to him? You mean they're gonna give me a little vacation so that I can go out and put an end to him? Huh? Shh, keep your voice down, Fuentes. What is this, a joke? Here, have a cigarette. One of your guards needs money. He lets you take off for 24 hours and cover for you. You ought to be able to take care of Manuel in that time. You mean? He's going to let me out for 24 hours. I'm going to do this job and come back here? Exactly. Nobody in the world would ever pin it on you. You got the perfect alibi. You were in jail. Mm. Except that guard you paid. He, he's going to know I was out. The syndicate would kill him if he ever double cross it, and he knows it. That sounds crazy to me. It's been done before. Yeah, it's been done before. How much will it give me for this job? Five thousand American dollars. Twice the amount you got before for doing this kind of a job. I want to need some money when I get out of here. Of course. You can't go back to your old trade. You'll be watched too closely. When they want me to do it? Monday. Before Minowell can print another paper. So you are here, Fuentes. See. Si. First, you will put these on. Now, here is the setup. Manuel works late tonight. When he leaves his office, Ricardo here, who was posted outside, will telephone you. You will drive the truck to Manuel's house and wait there until he shows up. Si. From here, it is only a few minutes, and you should be there before he is. Mm. Don't spare any bullets on him. Just make sure he's dead. Don't worry. Then you will drive the truck back here and change into your prison clothes. And don't stop anywhere. Tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, you will be driven back to the jail. Uh, you uh, still remember how to use one of these? <laughs> You're fooling. Give him the keys to the truck. The tires have been checked. There's plenty of oil and gas. Oh, hey, hey uh, uh, one little paper. And what's that? Could you leave a couple of sticks here? Just enough for me to do the job. No, it will drive you loco. You will end up driving to Ensenada or you will kill the wrong person. No, no. I no. cannot take that chance. Or you'll no. be picked up by the police. That will be the end of that. No, no. You just keep your mind on that $5,000. That will give you all the courage you need. No, no, no. Just a couple of steps. No.
Mal. Don't shoot, see. What are you doing in here? I came to see Diaz. I threw the wind out, huh? All right, I'll let the police find Don't call the police, senor. Look, senor, you, you don't understand. I work for Diaz the same as you. I'm just doing a job for him. I only came here to... To what? To get some tea, senor, so I can do this job for him. Bring him here. He'll tell you I'm all right. What kind of a job? Blowing up some store again? No, senor. It's, it's more important than that. That's all I can tell you. Maybe you could get it for me. I'll tell you who handles it. Then I won't have to bother Diaz at all. There he is. I told you I saw him take that truck down the street. You idiot. What are you doing here? Did anybody see you? No, no, senor. I, I came through this window. Look, senor, I need a couple, couple of sticks. I don't think I can do this job for you. Uh, you peddle this stuff yourself. You know what it does to you. I need it. Give him one stick, that's all. You will stay here now until it's time. Then you will go out that window again. This is, uh, it's too complicated to explain, Eddie, but uh, you have nothing to worry about. It does not involve you. I guess Manuel's the one that has to worry. What do you mean by that? Well, it figures. Manuel kept blasting away. You were called to Los Angeles. This guy has a job he can't do without help. Manuel's gonna be cut down tonight. Well, we have never talked about it, Eddie, but uh, you have known for a long time about me and the syndicate. I'd be pretty stupid if I didn't. But you kept your mouth shut. I like that. But there's no sense in keeping secrets now. Manuel has become like a wild bull. Now it is time to drive this sword home. I gotta get back in there. Eddie. You, uh, you look funny. I'm not used to murder. It'll take a couple of minutes. You, uh, you double-crossed me, Eddie, and, uh, you will be out of business also. In more ways than one. I told you once what I thought of Tijuana, but that I'd kiss the ground out there. That still goes. You better stay with me tonight. We go to the highlight games, eh? Suits me fine. Still make it Kinella. I couldn't cash a ticket tonight if I bet on them all. Well, don't give up yet. There are plenty of games left. Kills any chance I had. Would you excuse me while I called home? I, uh, Liz wasn't feeling very well this morning. I'd better check. Ooh, give her my best. You leaving early, Senor March? Uh, yeah, just for a minute. I'll be right back. I had a 
feeling Tijuana was too strong for your stomach. What are you talking about? You double-crossed us. You tipped off the police. I told them there was an accident up the street. What do you think, I'm crazy? Yes. We'll go on up and check, then. I will, but you're coming with me. Oh. Ten minutes. Be waiting for me on the porch. We're getting out of town. Well, Eddie, what happened? Well, I'll, I'll tell you when I see you. Just be waiting for me. All right, Eddie. Come on. Papa, from now on you better carry a gun. No, son. They'll think I'm afraid of them. He has made the biggest mistake of his life, and he will not get away with it. He's probably on his way across the border now. Well, that is a simple way of stopping him. You get the car while I make a telephone call. Get me the American customs, quick. Hello, Williams. Just a minute. Now, what kind of a car was that? I've seen traffic crawl, but never like this. We'll be across in a minute. I'm sorry the way things had to turn out, hon. All I had to do was keep my mouth shut, but I couldn't do it. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, I'm glad. If you'd have let him die, you'd have killed us, too, inside. We couldn't love each other or ourselves. There's no money in the world worth that. Your license, please. What's the matter? May I see it? Sure. Look, we've got to get across the border. We don't have any luggage. We didn't buy anything. Nothing in this car to interest you. Well, we have information to the contrary. What information? We've been told you're transporting narcotics. What? Oh, oh look, somebody's got his wires crossed. Else he's pulling a bad joke. No, we'll have to see that for ourselves. Look, the syndicate may be after me. Do I have to tell you about the syndicate? Oh, but if you're in danger, it's a matter for the police. This is customs. Take him over to the customs office. They're letting him across the border now. It would end this way, Eddie. Not with you. Well, the world is full of surprises. I found you when you were nothing but a shadow. I brought you back to life. I gave you a child that's coming, a future. And you repay me by running to the police. You needed me for a front. So whatever you're gonna do, can the sob music. All right, Eddie. As you wish. We'll start on your wife first. She didn't have anything to do with it. I want you to suffer, Eddie. And you will, watching what we do to her. 
Go ahead, Ricardo. No! Hold it, Daddy. Drive you into San Diego, then I'm coming back. Back to Tijuana? I want to see Manuel. Tell him everything I know about the syndicate. Names, addresses, everything. But it's too dangerous, Eddie. Well, this will help. All right, if you're going back, I'm going with you. You're in no condition to drive. Liz, you can't. Look, you're not going to leave me in San Diego. Don't argue. I love you, Liz. Three days later, in the form of Ellen Parcial, a bomb appeared on the streets of Tijuana. In Manuel's column, under a headline challenge, Here We Are, You Vultures, he announced he had gained possession of the names of 22 of the most important men in the syndicate. High-placed politicians, judges, businessmen, and he served notice that he would reveal the names to the legislature in Mexicali. Bueno. Get to me, Peron Diaz, on the telephone. They don't meet in Mexicali for another week. We still got time to stop them. Yeah, that phone has been ringing all day. Right up to the very top, they're trembling. Peron, what happened? Do something about him. Peron, Peron, as if it was my fault. It was not your fault, it's Manuel's. Of course. Look, why don't you let me call in a few of the boys? This time there won't be any slip-ups. Oh, who's to say that he hasn't given those names to his son or to, to someone else? We kill him, we still have the same problem. With Manuel lying dead in the morgue, nobody else is going to take that kind of a chance. Oh, uh, maybe yes, maybe no. You just want to lie back and wait? No. Manuel has left us no choice. With that article he wrote, he pulled the trigger himself. See? Por favor! I am looking for the Castro family. Can you tell me where they live? Un momento. Buenas noches. It's that way, one house after... <laughs> It's free. Did Manuel put that up? His son. Un momento. Hear me a minute, please. Knowing Manuel as I did, I can tell you what would have satisfied him today. Not our tears or our guilt, but the knowledge that he did not die in vain. That the bullets that crashed into his body infuriated us into action, gave us the indignation and the courage to resolve that we have had enough of terrorism and gangsterism. That living under the syndicate without dignity or without pride 
is intolerable. I differed with Manuel, as you know, and eventually we parted. But even then, I knew that I acted out of cowardice. Manuel was right. There is no power in the world stronger than us. Together, we can clean up Tijuana, make it a decent place to live. All it takes is the will. Let us carry our dear friend. Buena, muchachos. Attorney has some questions he wants to ask. right back. Thought you might want to read that while you wait. Here we are, you vultures. The boy takes after his father. July the 31st. The man who loved to fight and asked no quarter lay in his coffin. But his death was not in vain. Shortly after he was carried to his grave, a swelling tide of indignation forced wholesale changes in the government. The influence of gangsters, corrupt officials, the vultures, as Manuel Acosta Mesa called them, was crippled. A chain reaction shook the city. Tijuana today doesn't wear a halo, but it's finding its way to decency, led by the memory of a courageous newsman.